Okay, welcome everybody. Today's video is called uh, The Seven Churches. Amen. I believe I've probably uh, done this before. Amen. But we're going to be sort of looking at it from a, a different angle today. And um, just covering just some of the message that I um, ministered to a family and my family. That we're fellowshiping together on Monday God. And we're just going to be covering just some of it. But at least that will be helpful to you, bring it back to your memory. Praise be to God. Amen. As the Bible says, the Holy Spirit, amen, shall lead you into all truth. And as often you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So it's important, amen, that as we remember things as possible. Paul said, 1 Corinthians 15, commit these things to memory. <clears throat> Praise be to God. Amen. That is able to save you, which is the Bible said, the engrafted word. And how does the word become engrafted inside of you? Praise God, is by committing it to memory. Amen. If you hear the bird in the background, that's my lovely bird, Princess. Praise God. So it's always a delight to have her singing in the background <clears throat> in Jesus' name. So praise God. Remember, the seven churches. And begin with Revelation chapter <clears throat> 2 and chapter 3. It begins with, unto the angel. Praise be to God. Amen, um, of the church. And each church, amen, the, um, Jesus addresses the angel. And why would Jesus address the angel? Why would Jesus not address the pastor or the bishop or the apostle or the archbishop? Praise God. We don't, we never ever, when we're sending, when Paul sent letters to the Corinthians, he didn't address the angel of the church. And amen, when Peter wrote to, to, to people, he didn't address to the angel. They always wrote to people. So why would Jesus... Amen. Be <clears throat> addressing the angel. Apostle Paul didn't write to the angel of the church of Galatians or the angel of the church, praise be to God, of Philippians or the angel of the church of Colossians. It was always <clears throat> to the elect, praise be to God. Amen. Uh, or to Titus or Timothy. Never, ever, 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 ever the angel. So why did Jesus do this here? Well, let us go, let us look a bit deeper into some of the mysteries. I'm only going to cover the surface of this, okay? God said to Israel, I will talk to Israel through the two cherubim. That's what God said. Amen. When God comes to address Israel, he's going to be through, 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 the, through the two cherubims. Well, where did this take place? God has always talked to Israel through Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and all the prophets. <clears throat> Where is he going to talk to Israel? Through the two cherubims. Where did that take place? Amen. That seems to be a mystery. Because it's always been through the prophets. It's never been through two angels, so to speak. So this is a mystery. And of course, when we go into the church here now, it reminds us that mystery because for some reason, Jesus wants to talk through to the angel of his church. Which brings me back to that thing God said, that when he talks to Israel, He'll talk to them, amen, through the two cherubims, praise be to God, amen, which means it's pretty, very precious to him. Now, amen, what does that truly mean? Remember, let's go back to um, the, the beginning when God came down to Abraham. He came down with only two cherubims, two angels, praise God, only two, amen. When he's, amen, <coughs> in the tomb and resurrected, two angels standing there, praise be to God. When he's crucified, crucified between two. Why does that always happen when he's resurrected? Praise be to God, the two angels. So why is that so important to God? Amen. That he, he even when he goes, but even when he's, he's making um, um, in Numbers chapter 10, the trumpets that Israel must respond to, only two trumpets. And they're both beaten from the same metal. So this two angels seem to be, very, very important. And even when God comes to John Sodom, he sends uh, two angels with him. And of course, Zechariah. When Zechariah, a man, is, <coughs> sees the two anointed men, praise God, the two olive trees, he says, who are these? And the angel says, don't you know who they are? Don't you know who these two anointed men? Zechariah, I don't know. And the angel says, don't you know? Meaning you should know. How should Zechariah know? Let's look at the scripture. Who came down with Jesus? Amen. To, when it, God gave Abraham the covenant. Michael and Gabriel. Praise be to God. Who went to Sodom and Gomorrah? 
to judge Michael and Gabriel, praise God, who were the two angels <clears throat> that would have been at the resurrected tomb? It would have been Michael and Gabriel. How do we know that? The only two angels, amen, that God tells us the names of in the scripture is Michael and Gabriel. And you find it twice in Daniel <clears throat> and you find it twice in the New Testament. You see, two and two. Praise be to God. One with Gabriel coming to Mary and Revelation chapter 12. With Michael goes up and pulls Satan down from heaven and there's no room for him anymore. Praise be to God. Amen. Um, and, and Jude. So there we see, amen, God is clearly telling us only two angels' names. Why? Why would God do that? Why would he choose to do that? Remember, Jesus only came down with these two. What's God trying to tell us? Amen. That these two angels would come down and become men just like Jesus did. Amen. And that's why these two alone are given two human names. We only relate to those two angels in a human name by men. And any other angel comes and they ask him the name of the angel. What does Gideon say? What is your name? He said, why askest thou my name? For my name is a secret. No angel is allowed to give the name. Only those two that come down. And that's what Zechariah said. Who are these two? And the angel said, do you not know who these two? These two are the two anointed that will stand before the Lord of the whole earth. And we know the only two men that come, that bring the earth to a standstill, that stand before God, amen, of the whole earth, is Elijah and Enoch, the two witnesses to the end. The two men, look at this, that went straight back up to heaven. What did Jesus say? No man ascends to heaven except him that first came down. Remember, Jesus came down to Abraham with Michael and Gabriel. Amen. Praise be to God. And gee, God said, I will only talk to Israel through the two cherubim. Amen. And as soon as the two witnesses die, three days later, what happens to them? Do they stay dead like Apostle Paul or like Jeremiah? Or like Moses, or like Peter, or like the Apostle John. No, they go straight back up to heaven. What did Jesus say? No man comes down to go ascends to heaven, sorry, except him that first come down. And that's what God meant. He said, I will only talk to Israel through the two cherubim. And here we have Jesus. When Amen. When he begins Revelation, he talks to the churches. He only addresses them through the angel. What is that saying? It's coming to pass soon toward the end days. The time of revelation. That when Jesus begins to talk. He's going to talk to them. Through the angel. Michael and Gabriel. Who are respectively. Enoch and Elijah. That people didn't know. But the Jews praise God. Jewish people. In their, many of their writings. They already guessed. <clears throat> that Elijah was Michael. Praise God. It's something that. Had already come to them long time ago. Praise be to God. But anyway, when you look at these scriptures, you may not agree, it doesn't matter. Amen. But what do these scriptures mean? Praise God. And here we have Jesus now wanting to speak to the church. Amen. Via the angel, which means it's something very, very serious. Remember, God makes the earth come to a standstill through these two anointed men. Praise be to God. And God will only speak to Israel through the two cherubim. So we need to take these messages very sincerely, very sincerely in the churches. And, and sadly, praise be to God, amen, what we have in the churches, everybody's judging each other in the churches, amen, instead of, amen, judging themselves first. When you look at the seven churches, it's not about judging the churches. It's about judging yourself. Remember, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So whatever you're reading and hearing from the church, it's about yourself. Praise be to God. Amen. And you got to take uh, amen very seriously. Indeed, praise God to God. And that's why you find John the Baptist. When John the Baptist was in the wilderness, it said all of Israel, look at that, came out to meet him. Why? Praise God. Because he was one cry in the wilderness. Why? Praise God. Amen. Other churches not going out to meet a prophet 
Amen. Praise be to God. That's what it said when Elijah comes. He shall, praise God, turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Elijah won't need to come to the church. The church will come to him. Just like they did John the Baptist. What we have today. The churches are too busy judging one another. Instead of all of them going out. Praise God. To repent themselves individually. And that's the only time. When the churches will get right. When they stop looking at each other. But like they did with John the Baptist. All of Israel go out to meet him. And then the churches, praise God, will do what Jesus said in Matthew 11, Matthew 17. And then they shall be restored. Praise God. And so let us look at the church of Ephesus. And church of Ephesus, uh, Jesus says to the angel of the church, that I know thy works. Amen. God knows our works. Amen. He said, he knows that you, you never faint. Praise God. You, you, you always labor for his namesake. Amen. You even, look at this is what's magnificent. That you even hate the things that God hates. Wow, look at that. It's one thing to run from sin. Many of us run from sin and we, most of the time, maybe don't fall into sins. Praise be to God. But look at this. They, they hated the sins like God hated. Wow, look at that. But what did Jesus say? So Jesus spoke something good about them. And therefore, when you're addressing other churches, make sure you always start by talking good. And what you hear in the churches, people criticize other churches and other pastors, but they don't begin by speaking something good. There's always something good to say about somebody. Amen. Before you bring the rod in, use the staff. Remember, Psalm 23 said, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Praise God. Amen. You're never going to comfort people by your rod, except you say something good. And Jesus says something good, but then he said, I have somewhat against you. You've left your first love. You begin to love other things, like Balaam, amen, who heard from God so clearly what a magnificent prophet he was. But guess what? He loved the rewards that went with serving God. Remember Elijah and his, Elisha and his servant Gehazi, who turned back and went for the gold, amen, that was offered by Naaman after he got cured from leprosy. And then the leprosy was put upon the servant of Elisha. Why? Because he loved the rewards you get. And yes, you do get rewards in serving God. People will come and bless you. But you don't love the rewards. This is the difference here. Abraham was so rich, he said, he couldn't even carry the gold. But he didn't love the gold. And that's why God said to Abraham when he was about to kill Isaac, he said, now I know you love me. You fear me above these things. Amen. But what's happening to the church of Ephesus? Never fainting. Wow. Imagine never missing a prayer meeting. Amen. Never ever growing faint. All your life, you think you're the first person to go to heaven. But watch this. They start to, to love the rewards that went with serving God. Praise be to God. And that's why Job said, Have I not received good at the hand of the Lord? Shall I so also not receive evil? Apostle Paul said, Oh, that I might know him and the fellowship of his suffering. Amen. Do you love the suffering? Praise God. Do you understand what the suffering does? The Peter said, He that suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. If you want to stop sinning, suffering is the thing that helps you stop sinning. Praise be to God. <clears throat> but what happened to the church of Ephesus? They begin to love the rewards that come. Amen. From serving God. Amen. Praise be to God. And that's why God judged Balaam and ended up killing him. Amen. Because he loved the rewards of serving God. Amen. Praise be to God. Instead of feeling blessed, the reward is... Praise be to God, the fruits of the Spirit. The reward is, I, Jesus said, I come to you might bear forth much fruit. The reward is the joy. The reward is the peace. The reward is the, is the faith. The reward is the, the righteous that is bold as a lion. The reward is the gift of wisdom. Not the material things, praise God. Amen. And that's the church of Ephesus. So that's the attitude we must have and take it personally, your own life. Never think, praise God, no matter how good you're doing, amen, that Jesus won't rebuke you, okay? 
Remember, they never fainted. Never, never fainted. They did everything for Jesus' sake. That's what it said. But still, there was something wrong with him. And Jesus got so upset by it. He said, remember where you fell, lest I put out your light. Wow, look at that. You may not think your light's put out. Amen. But your light's going to be put out if you don't remember. Remember where you're falling. And that's what fellowship is. Fellowship is a place where you can hear the truth that you might remember because sometimes we forget where we fall. Amen. Jesus, remember one time when I first saw the Lord. Amen. I was telling my family I first saw the Lord. And when he came before me, the air shook. And I saw him standing there. And he said to me, Elijah, don't be a hypocrite. Wow. Wow. Praise be to God. I, I couldn't even see that in my life. Amen. Praise God. And it was through that I was able to see things that I couldn't see. Remember where you're fallen. Praise be to God. And that's what fellowship's for. And then we go on to the church of Smyrna. And the church of Smyrna. Amen. She said, I know thy poverty. <clears throat> Look at that. Wow. Are you in poverty? I know thy poverty. We're so busy today running from poverty. <laughs> Amen. Nobody wants poverty. But Jesus said, I know thy poverty. Or do you want Jesus to say, I know you're rich. I know you've got a bank account full of money. And you know this? Jesus didn't say that to any church. I know that you have so much money in the bank. No, no, no. No, no, no. He said to the church of Laodicea, you say that you're rich. But Jesus didn't say they were rich. Here to the church of um, Smyrna, he said, I know thy poverty. What a joy. For Jesus to, I know you when you're poor. Maybe he don't know you when you're rich. Maybe Jesus don't know you when you're rich. But he'll know you when you're poor. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. I know thy poverty. I want Jesus to know me. Do you feel poor in your life? Sometimes I feel so broken as a man. You know, I feel the least of all men. I, I feel like I'm nothing, nothing. Really poor, I feel so in poverty compared to other people. All my life, I've always felt poor. But Jesus knows my poverty. I know your poverty. Amen. But you're rich. Look at that. You're rich. And I am rich. So many things I'm rich in. Why do we want it all? When you see that you're truly rich, why do you want it all? Praise God. Yes, there's things that I don't have, but I'm rich. Amen. And Jesus said to them, Fear none of those things which shall come upon thee. Wow, what a church. Amen. You're not afraid of anything bad happening to you. Wow. We live in a, in, in, in a world today. Everyone's afraid of coronavirus. Everyone's afraid of cat. Everyone's afraid of dying. Everyone's afraid of a bill coming through the post. The church of Smyrna, be not afraid of anything that shall come upon you. Wow, that's when you know you're in a church that pleases God. That's when you know that you're the church, not in the church. You're the church that's pleasing God. Are you afraid of things that will come upon you? Praise God. Then he says that, amen, the devil is going to cast you into prison for 10 days. Wow, look at that. When you're in a church that pleases God, Jesus is able to tell you bad news. Amen. Do you want to hear bad news from Jesus? When you're in the right church, you're going to hear bad news. But guess what? To you, it's good news. The 10 days, praise God, were really 10 years. Amen. But to you, it will become like 10 days. Amen. 40 years of suffering will become like 40 days. And that's when you know you're in the right church. The 10 years just become 10 days. Praise God. Amen. It's nothing to go through. Praise Like Jacob said, for his two wives, 14 years. And he said, because he loved Rachel, amen, praise God. It was nothing for him to go through. Do we serve God seven years for our wives? Amen. Most of us, we, we begin to serve God after we get our wives. No, no. Jacob said, and it was nothing for him to serve seven years. Praise God. And that's the church of Smyrna. Amen. Praise God. When, when all the suffering you have becomes... An easy burden to bear. Amen. Praise be to God. And then Jesus says that you are not the synagogue of Satan. Look at this. 
Amen. When do we become the synagogue of Satan? When do I become the synagogue of Satan? When I start testifying Jesus, but I'm afraid of bad things coming for me. I can't turn my 10 years into 10 days. In fact, my one year of suffering seems like five years of suffering. Amen. That shows you that you're becoming the synagogue of Satan. It's not really a representation of the church of God. And remember, this is spoken through the angel. This should make your world come to a standstill. When you hear the word of God, it should make you come to a standstill. Why? The prophet says, let all the earth be still, for the Lord standeth up. And that's what the Bible should make you do. When you hear the Bible, it should make you come to a standstill. Why do you need to stand still? Because God said to Moses, stand still and see the salvation of God. Stop running after this want and that want and this want and that lust. You've got to be still to be able to hear what God is saying to you. And that's the church of Smyrna. We'll try and get through it because I only have half an hour in videos. I never do more than that. Praise God. So then we have the church of um, Amen, Pergamos. And Pergamos is the church. It says where Satan's seat is. What does that mean inside of our life? Where Satan's seat? Well, it obviously means, like I'm sitting on my bike, where Satan is able to sit down in the church. What does that mean for Satan to sit down? He's relaxed. He's relaxed. The prophet Zechariah, the angel comes to God in the beginning of Zechariah and he says, the whole earth is it still. They're all just at ease, praise be to God. And that's what Satan, when he's relaxing and sitting down in your church, I mean, Satan's not worried about your prayer life. Satan's not worried about your fasting. Yeah, you may pray. Satan doesn't mind you praying. But he's not worried about your praying. Isaiah 1, God said, I've had enough of your prayers. Amen. I've had enough of your Sabbaths to bore me. I've had enough of them. Praise God. Amen. Why? Because Satan's seat is there. Amen. He's smiling when you're praying. Like Acts 18. When the, the, the sons of Sceva begin to cast out the demon in the name of Jesus. The devils. Look at that. The devils are not afraid of the name of Jesus. Because if you use the name of Jesus... When Satan's seat is there, it has no power, praise be to God. That's what God said. They praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. If Satan is sitting in your, your church, in your life, it means he's not afraid of your prayers. He's not afraid of your Bible reading. He's not afraid of your fasting. He's not afraid of your testimony. But remember the Bible says they overcome the devil by the word of their testimony. By the blood of the Lamb, and they love not their lives to death. You gotta give more, man. You gotta give more. You gotta start making the devil feel uncomfortable when you pray. Feel uncomfortable when you read your Bible. Come on, read the Bible more. Pray more. Jesus said, Man, are always to pray and not to faint. Do more. Amen. Don't give Satan a seat in your life. And that's the Church of Pergamos, praise be to God. And then and then just covering quickly and we go on to the church of Thyatira, praise God. And the church of, of Thyatira, amen, praise God, is when God now speaks well of them, but said, But I have this against thee, that Jezebel, that false prophetess, is inside the church. What does that mean? That people want to hear, amen, goody goody things all the time. You're blessed and highly favored, saith the Lord. Everybody's going around saying that to each other. Amen. Look in the scripture. The angel. Remember we talk about the angel. The angels only ever used that once. To Abraham? No. Oh, to Elijah? No. To Jeremiah? No. Praise God. Only to Mary. Hail favored. Highly favored of the Lord. Blessed art thou and the fruit of thy womb. Only Mary. Amen. Why? Because she believed straight away the thing that God said. Moses didn't even do that. Moses wrestled with God. I don't want to go. Send somebody else. God nearly killed him in Exodus 4 because God was annoyed with him. Amen. God had to tell Jeremiah, Amen. Don't be, don't say that you're young. Praise God. Amen. Amen. God had to tell him, Ezekiel, eat what you're told and don't be rebellious. Ezekiel chapter 2. Praise God. Amen. All the prophets, Amen, wrestled with God somewhere. But Mary? No. And it's something that will cost her, her life. Amen. Now she's highly favored. Praise be to God. 
And so everybody's going around wanting to hear blessed things. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. What about when God speaks the truth to you and say, your children are going to die, as, as the prophet Isaiah may say to Hezekiah. Set your house in order because today you'll die. And he wept before God, praise God. And then God says to the church of Thyatira, repent, stop wanting hearing all nice, nice things all the time. When you're not able to hear the truth, I will cast your children into a bed of death. Look at that. Look at that. I will cast your children into a bed of death. My Aaron's sons in Leviticus chapter 10 offer strange fire to God. God burns them alive in front of Aaron there. And God said to Aaron, don't you go and drink wine and see me mourn over them. Amen. Because what they've done to offend me. You see the truth. Amen. Are we able to hear the truth? David said, let the righteous smite me and shall be a kindness to me. Amen. That's why Apostle Paul said, despise not prophecy. 1 Thessalonians, praise God. 5, I believe it is. Despise not prophecy. Quench not the spirit. They let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. But everybody wants soothe things spoken. And because of that, what happened? Jesus says, I will bring death to your children. What does that mean? Our children won't be alive in God. Is your children alive in God? Or oh, they look warm. Amen. Are they, are you, you think they're alive, but they're really dead. Amen. Why is that? Because false prophecy is inside of the church. And that's always or all of us. You know, and we don't want to hear the truth. Amen. But remember that rod and that staff, they'll come for you. You've got to let God use his rod upon you. And if you do, then goodness and mercy will follow you. But if you won't allow God to use his rod and his staff on you, goodness and mercy will not follow you. God threatens the church of Thyatira with death upon the children. Is God able to threaten you? Or will you become offended like Jesus said? Have you become my enemy because I told you the truth? John 6, verse 66, it said, Because of this hard saying, many of them follow Jesus no more. If Jesus was to speak the truth to you, would you follow him? Or would you follow him no more? And then you've got Sardis, praise God. But Jesus says to them, You have a name that you live. But you were dead. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Strengthen those things which are ready to die. Amen. Are we able to look at our life and to recognize things that are nearly dead? Or do we think everything in life is alive? My prayer life's alive. Amen. My Bible reading's alive. Is it really alive? Or is it actually so weak that guess what? In the next year, it's going to die. Amen. It's so weak, it's going to die. Are we able to recognize when things are ready to die? Do you know your marriage is ready to die? Can you recognize when your children, your relationship with your children is ready to die? Praise God. Or do you think that everything is so alive? Amen. And that's the church. You saw this. And I'm rushing there because I've only got two minutes left. And there we have the church of Philadelphia. Where Jesus says to them, I know you are of little strength. Amen. Praise God. But you have not denied my name. Look at that. Just because you're weak, it doesn't make an excuse not to serve God. It doesn't make an excuse because you're weak, you're not able to pray. Amen. Don't use weakness as an excuse. But the Apostle Paul said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because then the power of Christ rests upon me. The Holy Spirit will rest upon you when you're weak. Don't try to be strong. Everybody wants to go to the gym. Everybody wants to look nice. Everybody wants to look like they've got nice trainers, praise God. Who wants to wear holes in their trainers? Who wants to look like they're weak? When you're weak, the power of Christ will rest upon you. And when the two witnesses come, they said they're dressed in sackcloth. The worst clothing. Why? Amen. I don't want to be strong. And he said, then an open door is open for you and no one will shut it. Do you want God to open a door for you in your marriage? Do you want God to open a door for you in your health? I can feel the doors opening in my health. God wants to open up doors in your health. You're never healthy enough. Praise be to God. Amen. Does your marriage not need a door open to it? Do you not need more love of your wife? Praise God. The best wine saved to last. Jesus wants to open a door. Be weak. Don't try and be strong. Amen. Praise God. What an exciting church in the last church. The church of 
Laodicea and the church of Laodicea. He said, I, I know that works. How you say that you're rich. Remember, you say you're rich. Jesus didn't say you're rich. You say you're rich. What are you saying about yourself? I would let Jesus say it. You know, the Bible, Jesus said, seek not the honor that comes from man. I don't want the honor that comes from man. You know why it doesn't mean anything? The only honor that means anything, if God says it, if man says it, what does that mean? Jesus said, I do not seek honor from men. I have one that bears witness of me. And of course, that's the Holy Spirit. And that's the only one that counts. This is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. And not anything else didn't matter to Jesus. Amen. Do people's opinions about you matter? Amen. Does it matter? Amen. The only thing is important. If Jesus says you're rich or Jesus says you're not. And Jesus said to Laodicea, you say you're rich. You say that you're increase of goods and you have need of nothing. But I say unto you, this is what counts. You are poor. You are miserable. You are wretched and you are naked. Amen. What good news that is for Jesus to tell you the truth. Because when he tells you the truth, then you know it's truth. And then you can do something about it. Praise be to God. And that's why never fall in love with this world. Never rely on what this world has got to say. Praise God. Because it will always tell you a lie. He that's friends of the world is the enmity of God. Only seek the honor that comes from God. And he alone, praise God, can make you rich. Yeah, praise God. He said, come to me and buy me gold tried in the fire. Praise God. And that's all I've got time for. The time's ended now. These are the seven churches given to the angels which should make your world stand still. And begin to examine yourself. Judge yourself first. Before you judge the church. Amen. Judge yourself first. That you might have compassion upon the churches. Praise God. And Jesus never told anybody to leave any church. Just make sure you get yourself and your church right. That's what it said. The bride has made herself ready. For that spot or wrinkle. Or any such thing. And that's how beautiful these two chapters are in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the birds who singing, saying amen. Thank you for the fellowship of your word and the privilege and honor, the honor to be able to seek you before you're going to return soon. 2047, 24-7, 24-7. For that, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.